Cursor 2.0 just dropped and it is radically different than the cursor you're used to. The question is, should you switch from Claude Code and Codex to this new cursor? I honestly think the answer is going to surprise you. In this video, I'm going to cover all the new features and functionality of Cursor 2.0 so you can know what to expect, as well as tell you if it's time to switch from those other AI coding tools. Is Cursor 2.0 the new king in town? Let's get into it. So Cursor 2.0 just dropped like an hour ago. The question is, what's new with it? I'm going to go over what's new, then I'm going to pop open Cursor 2.0 and show you how you can get the most out of it, how you can start building apps immediately, even if you've never written a line of code in your entire life. But let's start off with what's new with Cursor 2.0 before we jump into the platform. First of all, it is fully focused on agents, not code. They don't want to look like a development environment anymore. So when you go in, by default, you're not going to see files. You're not going to see code. You're just going to see agents that you're managing. And this is pretty big. I'm excited for you to check that out. I actually really like this. Second, you can manage multiple agents at once. So it's all about being like the employer, managing a whole bunch of agents that are going out and doing work for you. That's really cool. Here's a big one, and I actually think this is sneaky, the biggest feature of them all. I think this is the only way Cursor is going to survive against the Claude Codes, the Codexes of the world, is they actually developed and released their own in-house coding AI model named Composer, which I see they went with the open AI route from Navin conventions by reusing the same name for multiple things at the same time just to confuse the consumer as much as humanly possible. But hey, I respect them for it. So they have a new AI model called Composer, even though they have features called Composer. Whatever. We'll go over that new model as well, but it makes it so they're less dependent on OpenAI and Anthropic for their models, which is really, really important if they want to survive. We'll go over just how good that new model is. And the last big feature is here, you can have multiple models working on the same problem. So you can spin up a task and have Claude, Codex, as well as Composer work on that problem. And then you can see what the results are and choose which result you like the best. A little bit on benchmarks before we go into the platform in just a second. These are the benchmarks Cursor put out when it comes to Composer. Uh, I don't know why they didn't name the competing models they're comparing it to, whatever. But they're saying from an intelligence perspective, it is right behind the best frontier, which I'm going to guess is Sonnet. And then from a speed perspective, it is by far the fastest. I think the fastest frontier is probably the Grok one, I'm going to guess. I, again, I don't know why they couldn't just name the models. Uh, here's what I'll say. I'd say take every benchmark any company has ever given you with a grain of salt. I think every AI benchmark on the planet is gamed. I think it's a totally fake stat that every AI company tries to put out to make their models look good. So listen, I'm taking this benchmark with a grain of salt because at this point, benchmarks mean pretty much nothing. But let's get into Cursor 2.0. Let's get into the actual platform itself and see how it holds up and build an entire app with it and show you how to use all the new features. So here is Cursor 2.0. Voila, this this is it. One thing you'll notice is you don't see any code. You don't see any files. You don't see anything technical related. All you see is this bar that'll list all your agents doing work in a chat interface. Why are they doing this? Because people over the last several months have been switching to uh, Claude CLI. They've been switching to Codex CLI. People... They have learned that people no longer want to look at code, write code, manage code. They just want to put their agents out there and get to work. So they are focusing a lot more on this agent interface. So let's start building an app. What we're going to build today is a stock market app. I really like building stock market apps as tests for these agents and for these models because it tests design. Will the chart look nice? It tests technical capabilities, can it research APIs and pull in the right data and display the data correctly? It tests taste, will it make it nice and tasteful for the users to use the app, the user experience? So I like using this as a test. So let's do this. Let's use all the new features. I'll go through every single new feature. So let's do this, let's start building it out. I am going to go over here into the main chat window. We have all our different agents here. I'm going to use Composer 1. Composer 1 is the new cursor model, right? So this is the one they developed in-house, which, which I think is a really smart idea. I think 
that depending on Anthropic and OpenAI would have been the downfall of Cursor, but I'll explain all that later. Let's get into it though. So here's the prompt I'm gonna do. I wanna build a stock portfolio app. It should allow me to type in a ticker for a stock. And by the way, the prompt's down below if you wanna follow along with me, highly recommend it. Then it saves the stock to a watch list, pulls the data about the stock from the Alpha Vantage API, really nice free stock API, displays the chart and displays other helpful information. It is critical that this is a beautiful app that doesn't look like it's built by AI and has nice animations and transitions so it feels really nice to use. Any other features you think are interesting, please add them. I like to add that so that the I can test the model to see what new ideas it can come up with and how creative it can get. Let's do this. Let's just hit send. Let's get it popping and let's get the model working. It is going to be interesting to see how this cursor in-house built AI model will perform. I'm going to hit run. I'm going to allow it to create all the folders. This is a fresh new project we're building here. No prior code or anything inside it. We're building it from scratch so we can see how this does. We're going to test this out in the in-app browser that Cursor just released as well. I like the sound of this feature. We'll see how that goes. We'll see if we can actually test the browser inside the app. I'm going to run this, and I'm going to keep it running. Uh, I do like the user interface. Composer and Cursor have always had uh, some of the best user interfaces. Very clean and easy to read. They also, up to this point, had one of the strongest uh, plan modes as well. We're not using the plan mode for this. We're just letting it run to see how well it does. And once this gets built out, what I'm going to test next is how well can this go with multiple agents? I'm going to spin up a bunch of agents right after it builds out this V1. I'm going to see, are they going to conflict with each other? Are they going to clash? Is it going to crash? We're going to see how managing multiple agents at the same time in Cursor is going to go as well. Because that's kind of the whole point of this Cursor 2.0 is to make it so instead of writing code, managing code, looking at code, you're just a manager of agents. You're just like the CEO of this agent company. The agents are going and working for you. So we're going to see how that experience is when we run like six or seven different agents at the same time. So stick around when we see that. But I'm going to let this run. I'm going to let this build out here. We're going to see what this looks like in just a second. And wow, this is actually fast. Uh, I have not really edited this at all. We're probably, what, a, a minute in here and it's already made 1,100 lines of code. That is pretty good. That is definitely faster than the other models. I can say that right off the rip. This is probably the fastest coding model. Uh, it is coding very fast. That is very impressive, but I will say this, speed means absolutely nothing if the code stinks. So we're gonna see if this works. Wow, oh, just like that, it's telling me to NPM run build. Okay, so we're just gonna let this rip. This is, this is it, this is working right away. Let's see how this goes. Wow, it is coding so fast that I literally uh, cannot even read what it is doing. It is going so fast. That is extremely impressive. I assume it's running NPM run build over and over again uh, so that it can test what it's doing. Uh, I, again, I can't even tell because it's moving so fast, which I think is a good thing. I think I like that. All right, Bill succeed. I literally, it's moving so fast. I can't read anything it's saying. All right, let's see what we got here. How do you start your serve with NPM run dev, search for stocks, click a result to add your watch list. I think we probably need to add the Alpha Vantage API somewhere. Oh, here we go. It's down here. important. The app uses a demo API key. Replace it in Alpha Vantage with your Alpha Vantage API key. Okay, so I'm going to grab that. I'll have the link to the Alpha Vantage API down below if you want to do this with me. You just it's completely free. Just put in your email and you'll get a key. All right, so I put that in. Let's test this out. So I'm going to open up the terminal. I'm going to do npm run dev. That looks like it's running. Okay, let's see if we can do... Can we use the in-app browser here? Let's go browser tab. We're going to enter... I assume localhost right here. So this is just Google Chrome built in. Let's see how we go here. Okay, uh, this looks terrible. Let's just see. I'm going to open up in a regular Chrome tab to see if it looks any different. And I'm going to pull it open. Nope, looks exactly the same. It looks terrible. That's one of the worst looking apps I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I'm going to imagine the styling is not getting applied because there's no way it would by default think this is the way an app should be styled. So let's go back to the agent here and let's say looks like the styling didn't get applied. And I'll send a screenshot. Whenever you get UI issues or anything like that, just screenshot what you see, put it in here. I wonder, it would be, can we select element, toggle? It'd be cool if I could like, oh, take, okay, take full page screenshot. Oh, that's what I was looking for. That's what I wanted. Okay, cool. I like that. You can just take a full page screenshot. I like that. Let's hit enter. That's a good feature. Thank you, Cursor. That is a good feature, but 
Now, <laughs> more important than screenshot features is the model actually doing well. So let's see how it goes here. Let's see if we could fix this UI issue. Cause that is, I don't even want to test it. It's so ugly looking, it hurts my eyeballs. Checking why Tailwind isn't applying, review the current, okay, I'm gonna have it review the current CSS setup. We're using Tailwind V4, which requires different syntax. I've seen this a lot with all models, to be honest with you. For some reason, they all go for Tailwind 4 and then have no idea how to use it. So they always have to downgrade to three. For me, Claude Code stopped doing this like a month ago. It was doing this all the time and then it stopped. Kodak still does this sometimes for me where it just, it doesn't know how to use the newest version of Tailwind. Then I force it to downgrade. And now we're doing it with Cursor's new agent. So we'll see if it can figure it out here. If we're going to go into a circle here right off the rip. Here's the thing. It is fast. It is the fastest one out of all of them. But if it is running low quality code or doesn't understand what it's doing, the speed doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. If you do, I'd rather have the right thing done slow than the wrong thing done very fast. So hopefully you can figure this out. It's... I've had to run literally 400 different commands right now to fix styling being applied. All right, looks like it is all set. Let's run npm run dev and see if it was able to fix this. I'm just gonna open this up and, oh, there we go, look at that. That looks good, it fixed it, okay. So it felt like it was taking a little while to do it, but it actually fixed it. That looks beautiful, good work. Let's, uh, let's test it out. Let's uh, do Apple, hit, oh, I like that. I like that. I uh, type in the beginning of the company and it gives me a bunch of suggestions. I've literally never seen any coding model do that for like build that out when I ask them to build this app. Like this is usually one of my first tests is to build like a stock market app. I've never seen them have like this autofill suggestion before. So that is really smart and nice. I hit it. Ooh, that is nice. That is nice. That is really well formatted. I like the UI. It is clean. Let's, uh, you know, it is nice that it's doing it in this little tiny browser, but I'm going to pull open regular Chrome just so we can see it in like a browser people would use. All right, let's do Tesla. Oh, that, that comes in. I like the way it like slides in all the stock slide. That's a nice attention to detail here. The charts looking good. Is this real time data? I think it is. I think this is real time data. Gives all the information on the stock. I like that. This is nice. This, this does look, oh, I could favor. They add favoriting. So they did add some features. Ooh, and then the watch list. The watch list is nice. Okay, so this is good, and it says live data. This is good. Does it still go with the blue and purple color scheme that every other AI on planet Earth goes with for some reason? Yes. The first AI model that makes it so blue and purple aren't the default color scheme for everything, I will be. I will use that model forever. Be the first one. That's all I ask. All right, so let's move on to other features. We tested the model a little bit there. It looked good. Listen, it messed up at first, but it recovered, and it recovered very nicely. Let's do this. Let's use what this was built for, which was spinning up and managing tons of agents at once. Let's go into it. So we're going to do a new agent. We're going to keep using the same composer one model we've been using. We're going to have it add a new feature. So we're going to say, have a chart open on the main screen that shows all the stocks on my watch list on the chart at the same time. I'm going to hit send on that. I'm going to spin up a new agent. We're going to say, Give me the ability to add how many shares I own for each stock and show me portfolio value. I'm going to hit send on that. I'm going to do a new one. Put a section at the top that shows my entire portfolio value and other stats about my portfolio. I'm going to hit send on that. And then I'm going to do another agent at the same time that does have a section at the top that shows all the data about the stock market today. And then we're going to hit send on that. So let's see how we can do this. We're spinning up four agents at once, working on four different features. Let's see if it can, if it's going to clash with each other if they're gonna make errors, if they're gonna break, let's see it. Cause if it can do this, this is really nice, right? This is the advantage to having a UI like Cursor 2.0 over say like a CLI, is that with a CLI, it's very hard to spin up multiple agents like this and manage them all. You have to open up multiple terminal windows at once to do that. With here, we have this like really nice cursor UI where I can see all my agents, see their progress, click on them and see how it's going. Okay, looks like all of the agents finished their work. That was fast. That was like two minutes tops. No, like one minute. <laughs> it was like one minute uh, to do all those at once, which is actually spectacular. Let's go in real quick, put a section at the top that shows my entire portfolio value. 
So went in, did all that. All right, it did hundreds of lines of code diff changes for each one, which is amazing. So let's go in, let's see what it looks like. All right, let's see what we got here. I refresh it, portfolio overview, total portfolio value, total change day, one position, that looks nice. Market overview, shows me S&P, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, that looks nice. Let's add other stocks to our watch list so we can test this out. Apple, cool, that looks great. Let's see if it adds it to our chart. Boom, both are on there. And let's see here. Okay, let's see if I can add how many shares I own. Oh, add shares buttons right there. Let's do 100. Okay, there's the Apple one. Let's say we have 20 shares of that. All right, nice, nice, nice. Now let's see if it updates our total portfolio value. It does. That's amazing. That works pretty incredibly. That's pretty flawless. That's amazing. That's really cool. I am actually blown away by how well that worked uh, and that I was able to do that basically in one shot. We had a little bit of the styling hiccups, but to be quite honest with you, as I said earlier, every AI model I've ever worked with when it comes to coding has for some reason attempted to install Tailwind V4, doesn't know how to use it and has to downgrade. So I'm not gonna knock off points for that. I will give it a ton of points though for building this really nice to use stock tra tracking app that works pretty well, didn't have any issues at any point, and is very pleasant to use. I mean, this is very nice to look at and use. I think it did a really, really good job here. So let's do this. Final review. Should you be switching from Claude Code and Codex to Cursor 2.0? I do like the UI. I do like that you can spin up multiple agents and manage them at once. I do really like the new model. I think the new model is really good. I mean, it's unbelievably fast. It's the fastest coding model I've ever used in my entire life. And it seems to write really, really good code at that speed, which is very impressive. Cursor, they had to do this. They had to release their own model because Cursor being dependent on OpenAI and Anthropic's models was its death sentence, right? Cursor and Anthropic, they can manage their margins, right? They have full control over the model. Cursor, they have to to do whatever margins Anthropic and OpenAI give them. So if they started to take over Cursor, Anthropic and OpenAI can push them out by making it way too expensive for them to run. So from a financial perspective, the fact that they were able to make their own model very, very impressive, and it works really well. UI perspective, I like it. I like that I don't have to look at code. I like that I don't have to manage code, write code. I'm just managing agents. This is clearly the future. This is clearly where it's going. They're going in the right direction by having this agent manager. That is really nice. They need to come out with a mobile app. There's no cursor mobile app. The fact that I can go on Claude's app or Codex app and spin up agents and spin up tasks in the cloud whenever I want, on mobile, wherever I am, is a huge advantage, and that's gonna be an advantage over Cursor 2.0 today. Am I personally switching from Claude Code to Cursor 2.0? For me, Claude Code is king right now. The answer to that is no, but the gap between the two is a lot smaller. Before, it, it was no question I'm not using Cursor 1.0 when it comes to Claude Code. Claude Code was so much better. This is actually up there. This is much closer, but at the end of the day, I still think that the Claude Sonnet 4.5 model is better. For me, speed is not quite as important. I will take a little bit of slowness to get better, higher quality code. I also like the way Claude Code and Sonnet 4.5 talk to me more. In the window, it feels, it explains a lot clearer. It explains a lot better. I know exactly what my next steps are. I know exactly how to test. Cursor's model is not quite there yet when it comes to the explanation, the feel, the taste but it is really impressive for what it did. So I am probably sticking to Claude code for now, but Cursor is a lot closer and I am very, very, very impressed with what they did here. If they add a mobile app that has an excellent agent manager experience in it, and if they keep tinkering with this model, which I'm sure they are, this is day one of them releasing this model. So I'm sure they will work a little bit on, you know, the communication, how it talks to you, the feel, the vibe of the model. I'm sure that will improve. But if they can close the gap on those two things, I think there's a pretty good chance I might switch and use it. But either way, there's a trial for Cursor. You need to test out, test Cursor 2.0 out now. See how it feels for you. See if you like it better in your workflow. There's a lot of people that are Cursor heads. They're die hard for it. You're going to love, love, love this update. This is a really strong update. I love the feel of it. Give it a test. Let me know down below. Are you switching? Is this for you? Have you tested it out yet? Is Cursor 2.0 your new main driver? Let me know. If you learned anything at all, hit subscribe. Turn on notifications. I live stream a few times a week as well. Leave a like if you learned anything, and I'll see you in the next video.